Hi, everybody. Great to be with you. So glad that you're all here. I have what I think is kind of an exciting topic today, but let's start in prayer. Let's just get centered, take a little breath together, and affirm. Thank you, God. We are so grateful knowing that you are here as we come together in celebration to learn, to laugh, to grow. We give thanks for each person in this circle and each person watching this video. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 So um, today I want to talk about uh, Elizabeth Sands Turner. And I know Becky knows who she is. You cannot go through these Unity classes without studying this woman's writing. She has gone through the entire Bible and she talks about her, her gleaning, her understanding and how to tie it into metaphysics. And sometimes, honestly, she's boring and I don't agree with her, but in this book, <laughs> I found something that I'm excited to share. So the name of the book is Your Hope and Your Glory, and it's by Elizabeth Sands Turner. And I'm going to jump to chapter six called The New Law. And I'm just going to read a little bit of it, and then hopefully we can talk about it. Soon after the selection of the 12 apostles, Jesus delivered the um, immortal lessons that com comprise, sorry, comprise the Sermon on the Mount. Even as the law Moses received on Mount Sinai is the heart of Judaism, the Sermon on the Mount is the heart of Christianity. The sermon is the new law. It is not meant to change the revered Mosaic law, but to teach us how this law may be fulfilled spiritually. The first law given to Moses and which came from the heights of Sinai in the wilderness was accompanied by thunders and lightnings. The new law was enunciated from the summit of a grassy hill in Galilee probably from an elevation known as the Oriental Saddle. Here a crowd ga gathered to see and hear the master whose words were spoken in quietness and love. The thou shalt not of the Ten Commandments is replaced by the words, blessed are ye in the Sermon on the Mount. So, I really love that she's tying the Ten Commandments in with Jesus's teachings. I've been immersed, and I know, Becky, you have too, in, in learning the Bible uh, from beginning to end in whole new ways as we go forward in, in this schooling. And honestly, it's, it's hard to reconcile the Old Testament with the New Testament. I mean, it's like, what? And I love the way that she ties it together that the commandments don't change. But when we see them through the eyes of blessings and love, right? It's almost like new thought. When instead of beseeching God, I affirm it changes the way that I pray. And, and I really loved her points that Jesus didn't take away the Ten Commandments, but he gave us a new way in his new teachings to look at the world through love and blessing. So I thought that was very exciting. I really enjoy um, a lot of this book, Your New Hope of Glory. So comments, what do you think? Anything? I'll share. What pops into my head is a book that I read called Love and Law. And, or rather, the law's here, but love's here. Or the law's out there and love is in here. 
And we have to have both. That we have to have, like you're saying, the commandments work. They're the law. But when you look at it from love, it changes the perspective. And you can see the beauty in it, the grace, the connection of people. When you combine both, it's like a team effort. And that's what spirit wants of us. He wants us to live in the material world where we do have laws, but he wants us to live in this world from love, which is a higher consciousness and inward consciousness with source. And when you do that, when you come from love, you see beauty in nature, you see God in every person. And life's really a lot more fun when you just come from the law. Oh, it's hard and you get angry and depressed and why me and poor me. So we want to stay in that, that higher consciousness as we live in the worlds of, of the laws. And um, great topic. Thank you for sharing. That was wonderful. Uh, you, you both just explained the Old Testament to me. <laughs> like Linda said, we've definitely been as a as a student in the urban ministerial school you definitely get the opportunity and the challenge to read um, the bible in a different way now i will be you know all out here i am not a fan of the bible i it was a it was a tool of a weapon used against me as a child uh put your hand on the bible because i know you're lying and if god's going to strike you down that kind of thing and i'm not kidding you um, you know, so it was, it was very hard for me to approach it. And, and in some naive way, I thought, oh, the urban ministry school, I didn't really realize how deep I would be going into the Bible. So, you know, jokes on me, here we go. And um, some of Turner's stuff, I'm just like Linda, some of it, I can go, yes, I got it. And some of them I'm like, what the what? You know, so I can be completely, and it's just like, I know it's the same woman, but was she bipolar or something? Because, or maybe I'm bipolar because I'm not getting it today. Um, last week I was doing, uh, reading her in one book, two separate books. And in one book, I was just like, we were best friends. And in the next book, I'm like, like what? what oh, these are fighting words, you know? But I, I guess for, she understands it on a level that is just, very unique in the book that you're speaking about I haven't gotten into yet so I'm, I'm sure I'm headed that way but I absolutely connect with what both of you said is having both of them there the old testament and the new testament having one is the laws and one is the love that just totally makes sense to me that yes it's we're not taking away saying well now the old testament doesn't exist the hebrew bible is no longer valid because now we have the new testament that's not what we're saying we're saying that there's both. And if we can, if we can come from what Jesus, what I believe Jesus gave us, my interpretation here, totally guys, I'm taking literary changes here. Um, the law of love. If we can come from that, the things we can conquer, not only in our lives, but in the world, you know, and it's just amazing to me that, um, it, it's, it's, it's changed the whole way I'm, I'm understanding the Bible. And I still have more Bible classes to go and I'll, I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. So, you know, the kids always tell me, you've got that Bible open again. Look how thick that Bible is, grandma. I'm like, I'm still trying to understand. You know, I'll probably be on my deathbed still trying to understand. You know, I think this is something we're going to study. Once you get into it, you study it forever. And I'm grateful for that. Um, and I know that being who I am, that the more I study something, the more I understand it. And sometimes things change within me still. You know what I mean? I may have one opinion this year and five years from now, I go, hmm, this makes more sense now. You know, once I've lived through it, grown through it. So I love the way you guys have said that. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And I look forward to reading her book as well, her next book. <laughs> well, I'll wind this up because I've just gotten a lesson from you all because I'm not a Bible reader. I probably had to read parts of the Bible when I was in Sunday school. I know I had to learn the Ten Commandments, but I couldn't recite them to you now. So um, I'm learning a lot. I feel like I'm in class with you girls. What I, what I take from it is 
is it wasn't what it was what was said but was how jesus showed us the way all right so he was here to show us the way to live and to be happy and to be loving and and i don't know if that's consistent with those 10 commandments because i like i said i couldn't recite them to you but what i get from the bible is what i take from what Jesus was here to teach us. And one of the things I, re, I re, always remember that when I was at, the, uh, when I first started Unity, the minister said that these are metaphors. This Bible was written how many years ago? He said, if you said right now, I'm really in a pickle. And if somebody a thousand years from now read that, and look was literally looking at it like how in the world did she get in a pickle so it's the it's metaphorically understanding the bible and so if if i ever do become a bible reader i will be looking at the metaphors and trying to see it uh in that way so that's my piece as a student of you three wise women <laughs> I think we can learn from you just as much, Kathy. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else? I'll pray us out if not. Okay, so let's breathe in that love in a few moments with prayer. Father, Mother, God, we thank you so much for the time together, for these lovely ladies, and for their openness and their willingness to share your truth with the world and to know that each person, their experience with this is perfect in their lives as we grow through our lives and we grow closer to you as we hope that all of those out there watching are doing the same by growing through their lives and growing closer to you. That's all that we care about. We know that all of your words, whether they're law, love, or a combination of, the, of everything, we know that you love us deeply and only want what's best for each and every one of your children. And for that, Father, Mother God, we are so grateful. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again. We're so glad you're here and I love the topic and uh, leave a comment. Let us know if you want to join us. Uh, subscribe everything. We're getting more subscribers every day. We're really excited that people are leaving comments and that they want to uh, be a part of the conversation. So have a blessed day and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.